What's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again with the Atomic Pi $35 single board computer and today we're going to be running Windows 10 and testing out some older PC games running on this hardware. If you've been interested in picking up an Atomic Pi to run Fortnite and Apex Legends, totally forget about those ideas because this is a low end chip and it's just not going to handle those newer games, but it will play some older stuff at 30 and some games even at 60 FPS. If you're not familiar with the Atomic Pi, I have created a couple other videos. I will leave a link in the description plus all the specs down below, but I'm going to give you a quick rundown. For the CPU, we have the Intel Atom X5Z8350. This is a quad-core CPU at 1.44 GHz with a boost up to 1.92. 2 GB of LPDDR3 running at 1600 MHz, and this is non-user upgradable, so we're really limited on the RAM and running Windows 10 here. We're almost maxing out this RAM like it sits. This is Windows 10 Home Single Language. The board does have 16 GB of onboard storage built in, but unfortunately I couldn't install Windows 10 on it, so I'm actually running this from a USB hard drive, so this is pretty much Windows to go. It's definitely going to be a slower experience, but the manufacturer of this board says Windows 10 can run on here. They do not recommend it. It's not one of the operating systems that they list and show you how to install. And if this was my daily driver PC, I wouldn't be running Windows 10 on it every single day. I would install some form of Linux like Lubuntu or even Pop! OS. It just performs much better with this low-end chip and 2 gigabytes of RAM. But as you can see, Windows 10 is working here. Everything is running from a 2 terabyte USB 3.0 hard drive plugged into the USB 3.0 port on the Atomic Pi. I'm going to get into a little bit of YouTube playback real quick, and then we'll get right into some Steam games. Running Windows 10 from external storage is definitely slow. I really wish they would have added at least 32 gigabytes to this board, but I know they had to keep the price down. After all, this is only a $35 single board computer, and it does a great job for a $35 board. Especially with Linux installed on the internal storage, it's much faster than Windows 10 here running from an external hard drive. I'm going to try to get this video running at 1080p and then we'll go full screen with it. So once you get everything loaded up, video playback is no problem at 1080p, even with Netflix and Hulu, but you're very limited with 2GB of RAM running Windows 10 from an external drive. It's just going to be a really slow experience unless you have some super fast storage. So now it's time to get into some gameplay testing. Like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, we're going to be running some older Steam games. Everything you see is going to be running at 1080p, mainly because this is such a low-powered chip. First up, we have Half-Life 2, 720p, low settings. Now inside of the corridors and buildings, you're going to get a constant 60 FPS. It performs really well, but once we go outside, it's going to drop on down. If you set V-Sync to half, you could run through this whole game at 30 FPS with no trouble on this little board. Now this isn't an old game, but this is one of my favorites, Dead Cells. I thought we'd at least get 30 FPS constantly through this, but unfortunately, the chip just isn't powerful enough to push it. For Dead 2, low settings, 720p. 
I just want to show you guys that I am not locked at 20 FPS. When I look up here, jumps up to 60. We're just getting around 20 FPS when we go outside. And by the way, I do have fraps running up in the top left hand corner. This is only to display the FPS so we're not taking a hit on the CPU from recording. This is all done from an external capture card. Here's Grand Theft Auto 3 at 720p. Another older awesome Rockstar game, this is Manhunt, we're at 720p here also. Here's Cuphead at 720p. We just can't hit that 60 FPS mark. Unfortunately, the last two games that I wanted to test, Team Fortress 2 and CSGO, would crash when I was doing matchmaking. I'm pretty sure we were just running out of RAM on this system. So in the end, it's definitely not great for gaming or Windows 10, and it really comes down to lack of internal storage and lack of RAM. With 2 gigs in Windows 10, it just really doesn't work out nowadays. So that's pretty much it for this video, guys. I really appreciate you watching. I do want to make this abundantly clear. The manufacturers of the Atomic Pie, digital loggers, have never touted this as a gaming machine whatsoever. So definitely don't get one of these if you're looking for Windows 10 gaming. As you just saw, performance isn't great. If you're interested in checking out some more videos on the Atomic Pie, I'll leave links in the description and on screen now. If you want to see anything running on this board, let me know in the comments below. But like always, thanks for watching.